Is up. Finally, we are here. We are again. here. <laughs> I am so, so excited. <laughs> Joe is so laid back. It's ridiculous. Hey, I got my coffee. Let's let's do this. I'm I am excited. <laughs> <laughs> Please try and contain said excitement. No, guys. Actually, I am really excited. If this is your first time listening, you'll get to like. I have a. Re- I'm really relaxed. He's he's actually excited. Uh, yes, I am he actually. Is very he's not excited. being rude. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anyways, we are back. This is episode eight of the supporters. Awesome. Yay. And let's see. We've been. We we're the supporters. We should introduce ourselves for new listeners. That's correct. Mm-hmm. Um, why don't you introduce yourself, oh, glorious host? Okay. I'm Courtney. I'm the host of the podcast. It's kind of my little brainchild. Brainchild. <laughs> and um, um, he's been neglected. This brainchild has been neglected for a couple weeks. I'm so sorry. Yes, for those of you regular listeners, and a special apology to our main man, Adrizzy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is for you, Adrizzy. <laughs> and my lovely co-hosts. Go ahead. Um, I am Professor Chris. Uh, you guys know me from here, obviously. <laughs> um, and you may also know all of us, in reality, from Trainer TV, which has really been amping up and been exciting to uh, to see that grow. And um, leading me into our third and final host. I am Aaron, a.k.a. Trainer, as some of you know me from my self-given name. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, I, I am the one who started trainer TV and then now we have kind of branched off into other goals and visions that we've had. So this is a new one of those, or one of the three that we have going. This is our podcast side thought up as mentioned before by Courtney. So awesome to have this here, um, on trainer TV and I'll have all the links down below in the description to um, the supporters YouTube page where you can go and subscribe. <laughs> awesome. And make sure that you go back and listen to the older episodes as well. Uh, a particular favorite of mine is the uh, uh, discussion that we have on our gyms that we yeah, would have. Yeah, I think that's probably the best one and, we've done. And the way that gyms work in the Pokemon world and... Um, that, that was one of my favorites to record. That was mm-hmm. such a good one. If you don't listen to yeah. any others, go listen to the Gym Leader episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and just be gracious if you listen to the first couple episodes. Just be nice. <laughs> we be gracious. We rocked it. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> so, anyways, we have so much to talk about, you guys. It's kind of ridiculous, So, because we always have our new segment in the beginning, mm-hmm. and I feel like there were some weeks where we're kind of scraping for stuff to come up with for news, mm-hmm. and then when our lives get so busy <laughs> yeah. that you know we're, we're recording videos and we're you know traveling and all that kind of stuff, all of this insane news drops, mm-hmm. and we're not here to cover it, so we are here <laughs> to recap as well as cover the new news as well. Yes. So, first thing we need to talk about, Chris and I were saying before this happened that because Chris faced some of these decks in PTCGO, he was playing Shiftry decks, and it was just really awful. It was not fun, and we were saying that he needs to be banned. It's not fair. It doesn't make for a fun game. And then next thing you know... Get on good old Twitter, and he's banned. The ban hammer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Aaron, do you want to explain how Shiftry worked and why it was so nasty? Yeah. Yes. Um, he was a very nasty fellow. Um, he was mainly banned, I think, because it didn't give your opponent a chance at all. It, you know, right. didn't create a nice gameplay or a- environment. Um, basically, um, because of the gym that came out recently in Ancient Origins, I believe, right? Yes. The Forest of Giant Plants. Yes, Forest yeah. of Giant Plants. Um, you were able to evolve all the way up 
from a basic Pokemon to a stage two if they were at least grass type for the basic and the stage two. Mm -hmm. Shitri's dark, but because of his stage one, he was able to still evolve. Now he has a ability that mm -hmm. you flip a coin and if heads, you get to put one of your opponent's Pokemon back into their deck. So basically, it just abused that. And in, 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 ex, in Expanded, it just got ridiculous with cards like Recycler or Recycle. Yeah, Recycle, um, Devolution Spray, allowing yeah. them to just devolve and then re-evolve. <laughs> yeah. It was AZ, Super Scoop Ups, that all over. And basically, they just put all your Pokemon back into your deck, which at the start of the game is maybe two three pokemon yeah yeah um, and um, then you're done yeah yeah so the the official reasoning that the pokemon company gave was they had said it created a um it created a one-sided game where the whole game revolved around um one opponent's first turn mm -hmm. and you know so basically when you're playing shiftry all you can do is sit back and hope they fail that's like, true. That's really it. Yeah. And like the shifter decks that I faced, I went as far as to face one that um, they drew through their entire 60 cards on their first turn. Yeah. So it's pretty ridiculous what they can do, <laughs> <laughs> these decks. Um, so yes, I'm very grateful that that has joined Lysander's trump card in the, in the Shadow Realm. In the Shadow Realm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where it got banished. Yeah, it's just, I really loved, this is kind of, I don't know how important it is but i really liked the statement they put out because it was really well thought it wasn't just like well we don't want it in the meta anymore it's gone it was kind of like here's why and they did it really politely i don't know it was just good from a pr point of view mm -hmm. yeah i think they handled it really well and they did the same with trump card too i just mm -hmm. think that so many people use trump card they weren't willing to listen to their reasoning as to why it was banned and i was one of those but now that it's gone i understand it yeah you know? definitely mm -hmm. and just a little thing to add on the top top of that um if you're one of the people who are like why do they even create these cards if they're gonna ban them right it's the reason why shift tree was so crazy was because of the stadium which just came out in the last set Right. So you have to keep in mind that cards aren't created, um, you know, with being banned or, uh, you know, being an OP card, as they say. Right. <laughs> um, they're done in such a way where it makes sense for the current game and the current meta. Right. As cards get added to that, things change and some cards just, you know, are found to be amazing. Right, and because um, I mean, for instance, like that uh, shift tree, it was like a f like a three or four year old card. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's not something that you know they instantly made, like you said, to be awesome. Right, <laughs> it <laughs> happens over time. And like Lysander's yeah. trump card, for instance, like it wasn't um, used and abused until um, uh, Roaring Skies. When you know you had Rayquaza and you had the Acro bikes mm -hmm. and you had the Trainers Mails and all of those cards that allowed you to run through your deck at an insane rate, right. and then because of Trump Card, yeah. you know, um, none of that mattered. So, but at the time when Trump Card was first printed, um, it was more so a counter to Night March than anything. Right. It was more so to balance that out. Yeah, and I think for the. I don't know. I don't want to label them, but I think for the haters of the like, well, why would you ban it? Why would you make it if you're gonna ban it? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, I don't know. Like, are we so uptight that we won't allow them to make mistakes? They're a company of just a bunch of people. People make mistakes. It's gonna happen, and I think you just have to allow for that. There's only been two cards banned since we even started getting back into TCG. Mm -hmm. Right. I so. mean, since Wizards of the Coast days. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're talking, because I think it was like a slow king or something that like was way back in the day that got banned. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's that's amazing for a TCG. That is amazing, because mm -hmm. you look at any other TCG, um, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. and they have a constantly flowing list of banned cards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just because they... I, I don't know. Either they just don't keep as good of track as cards as the Pokemon company does, mm -hmm. or whatever it may be. 
Yeah, but now it's kind of fun because people are going to have to start, if that was the deck they were playing on running, they're going to have to think outside the box, go for something else. So, yeah, definitely. it's definitely big news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for to sure. see where it goes from here. Me too. Uh, moving on, we have some. Okay. I'm not going to lie, I'm not totally caught up on this, but I know that there were some new forms of Zygarde yes. revealed. If you don't know much, I will take over from here. Please do. <laughs> okay. So, um, this is obviously in the video game side of things. Um, actually, more specifically, the anime side of things, because this has only mm -hmm. actually been officially revealed in the anime. So, a few months back, we had an image leaked from, I think, Coral Coral Magazine. Mm -hmm. That was this big, hulking, like, Gundam-looking Pokemon. It turns out it is what's called um, Zygarde Perfect Form. So, um, the Zygarde that we have right now is now considered Zygarde 50% form. Mm. And then there is a Zygarde 10% form that looks almost like a... Um, do you want to pull up the picture there, Courtney? It looks almost like a uh, a, looks like Houndoom. a skinny sick like Houndoom. Houndoom. And um, and then otherwise we have the Zygarde core, which are those little like green blob things that we got a sneak peek on like a few weeks ago. And so apparently Zygarde is like this machine thing that like upgrades it's and it, cell. it like yeah it makes use of like what it can so like it goes to the dog form and it has 10 percent and then it goes back to that snake form at 50 then it turns into this like golem like gundam style mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, not not gundam style not <laughs> oh, bomb gundam. gundam like the big robots people that'd pilot. be sweet though i mean i would <laughs> love that um which to me this all but confirms pokemon z version Yes. No, I think that's what it leads to. I mean, in because, you know, uh, the creators of Pokemon had said, well, we're going to do something different, yada, yada, which they may. Like, they may still have Pokemon Z, and they may allow you to go to Hoenn, for instance, mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, but that, for me, it just pretty much confirms Pokemon Z version is coming out. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you guys think of the forms? Because I have my own little opinions about them. I like the concept, but what do you guys think of them? I, well, first I'm confused because I want to know how you upgrade Zygarde mm. from the core. Like, how do you get him to turn to 10% or 50 or to perfect or whatever? I'm curious what triggers that right. in Zygarde. Um, but otherwise, it's just random to me like i can't make heads or tails of it because first it's a blob and then it's a dog and then it's like a snake with a collar and then it's a robot <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. like it just confuses me it's it's really yeah. confusing for me well, what do you think i i like the dog form i mean it looks cool it has like a little leash um, but like Chris said, I don't really understand where they're going with this. It might be one of those things, I could be totally wrong, but maybe it's one of those things that we'll find out later, like, well, they pulled a bunch of stuff from, like, their culture and put it into a Pokemon, because sometimes that's happened where I don't understand what's going on, and then somebody explains to me that it's, like, part of some legend and stuff right. like that. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of an interesting, I like the concept that they have to gather a bunch of themselves basically to make a full yeah, Pokemon. Yeah, it's interesting. But I wish it looked better. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, and that's where I'm going. Like, I would disagree, and I would say I hate the dog form. Oh. And mm. I, the first thing I saw, you know, it always takes me a while to get used to new Pokemon. Right. But like, I saw it, and I was like, really? <laughs> like, <laughs> like a dog. <laughs> now, where this could be cool, and where I like. I think it might be going is kind of like Morph from Treasure Planet. Oh yeah. Where, you know, he he's a little dude, but you know, imagine a ton of them. And I I like the culture idea and but I also like like you mentioned I think the word core a lot or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it's Zygarde core form. Mm -hmm. So like imagine like a core or like, you know, like an apple a core. reactor of oh. sorts where things go in and come out and mm -hmm. you know it's like almost semi-dimensional but it's like always constantly moving depending on how much you know attached to each other and stuff like that so i like that idea 
but yeah. I don't necessarily like how different they are just because I think of Pokemon usually in its normal evolutionary lines right where they all look similar well I was but. gonna say it makes the game less um static you know there's this whole concept you walk into the grass and then you run to a Pokemon but now you have this these Zygarde cores that are like running around that are all around you so you know that they're there and I don't know it makes it a little more kinetic for me the interaction mm. between the trainer and the Pokemon mm. but I, like I was that. thinking maybe um Maybe you'll collect them by like walking. Like the amount of steps you take, you'll acc- accrue more. Cores. Interesting. That'd be crazy. That's you know? interesting. It's it's weird as well because it's like you have two trainers, for instance, and they both walk up and they're like, "I caught a Zygarde," and they're like, "Hey, I caught a Zygarde too," and then they like look at them and one has a dog and one has a robot or snake. <laughs> it's like, wait, I thought you said you had a Zygarde. Well, I do have a Zygarde, yeah. Yeah. but Zygarde doesn't look like a dog. <laughs> I'm just wondering what... Okay, are these are all going to be the same type? I don't know. I don't know if we have confirmation on that okay. yet or not. Mm. Yeah, because the Zygarde complete form is blue, green, and red. Which is symbolic of Xerneas and Evil Tall. Right. Because supposedly what it is is... Um, because, you know, Xerneas gives life to everything around it, mm-hmm. and Evil Tall sucks life from everything around it. What Zygarde does in the Legends within the game is he brings balance to the ecosystem. So he's Anakin. Or Vishnu. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, that's the Force. Uh, Oh, dang it. (laughs) And I'm not sure what you were referencing. Well, according to, I think, Hindu or somewhere in India, it's Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. Brahma is the, you know, the creator. Mm -hmm. Um, Vishnu is the preserver. And Shiva's the destroyer. Mm. So if you have a destroyer and a giver of life, you need a preserver. Interesting. Gotcha. So I think that's where it might That be could going. be where this comes from. Possibly. Yeah, Potentially. Mm-hmm. Um, Culture. Bam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, yeah, that's, there's a lot to wait, like look forward to on that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think that should that should be interesting. What I find more yeah. interesting is this weird Greninja ash. Yeah, we were going to talk about that. So... I don't know. This was also in the Coral Coral, right? Correct. This Greninja. Or Famitsu, one of the two. Yeah. This uh, picture of Greninja showed up, and he has hair? Now, can I, can I see that picture? So, yeah. in the description, it says, Ash Greninja, and this is the official English translation. Okay. It says, Ash Dash Greninja. Uh-huh. Ash Greninja is the form that Greninja takes when the bond between it and Ash is raised to the limit. The strength of their bond changes Greninja's appearance, and it takes on the characteristic look of Ash's attire. This phenomenon is also said to have happened just once, several hundred years ago in the Kalos region, but remains shrouded in mystery. Interesting. I think this is going to be an anime-only thing. I think you're right, because that'd be kind of hard to do in the game. Because... Now, of course, X and Y allowed you to customize your trainer, but I think that's way too much work to put into, you know, whatever Pokemon you raise up, it'll look like whatever you're wearing. Like, that's true. You know, yeah. and another that's thing, kind of silly. another thing that doesn't make sense to me. So, if this type of bond happens, and if this has happened once in the whole, you know, existence of the Kalos region, why did this happen with Ash and Greninja, and not Pikachu? Yeah. That is, yeah, that's a valid point. That's like, a very valid point. And then I think about, why didn't that happen with AZ and his Flabebe? If his uh, Floette. Floette, sorry. Well, and that's what I think did happen, because his Floette has, like, black and red on its flower. So that's what I think they're referencing, because well, AZ wears black uh, and red. But that's part of his design. They added things to Grit Ninja. No, floettes don't normally look like that. They don't have a flower? Not that color. It's not possible to get that color on a flower. Yeah, but they have a flower already. I'm saying it's different to alter it's part of the Pokemon design that it already like has. Like the floette than doesn't have like easy long white yeah, hair. Yeah, like they didn't give floette or something like a that. hobo's jacket, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, I see. Yeah, so I'm curious to see what they're going to do with that, and I'm skeptical, because I don't want this to turn into, um, what's what's the weird manga 
that like were humans fused with their Pokemon. Oh my gosh! It it only ran for I a little know. bit. I don't want this it's to turn into. It's a good thing into... that we don't know the name of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't want this to be that exactly. Like Mega Evolution was cool stuff like that. Please don't make this a thing. Mm-hmm. Yes. We don't want people Pokemon, especially with like. Right. <sighs> yeah. yeah. Cynthia. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that they went far enough with the cosplay Pikachu for the contest. You can stop after that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's pretty fun, whatever. But even I don't really use that a lot. Well, and now we're getting into Animorphs. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, like, people turning into Pokemon or Pokemon turning into people or whatever. And, um, you know, it's like, there are stuff in, like, the libraries of Pokemon games that say, like, once a human turned into a Pokemon or vice versa or whatever. That's fine. Leave it as legend in the libraries. Yeah. <laughs> However, in... Hashtag leave it in the libraries. <laughs> leave it in the li- <laughs> Red and blue, there is a machine that a person could turn into a he Pokemon. He swapped bodies with the Pokemon. Okay, so it's like a soul... They, like, switch soul brains, swap. I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not Clefairy. like it actually genetically changed you. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's kind of weird. I don't want to spend more time on it. No, that's, yeah, we should move on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so not as exciting as the Zygarde forms, I guess. <laughs> Coming up in the next set for TCG, is it called Break? Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Mm-hmm. So everything, basically all you need to know about this set is that everything is gold. <laughs> and that's all that matters. <laughs> the way, what, what Courtney is referencing, for those of you that haven't seen it, is um, there are these new Pokemon Break cards. And we're not exactly sure how they work yet. Um, but we know that they turn sideways. And the Pokemon is all gold. It looks like it's solid gold on the break cards. And you place it sideways over the picture of another Pokemon that's the same. So we don't know if this counts as an evolution or if you can just place it right on or whatever. Um, but it gives the Pokemon like either an extra ability or an extra move or something like that. But it, it retains the typing and HP of the previous Pokemon. This is a really interesting mechanic. Um, Although, personally, I don't think that these break Pokemon are going to be overpowered. I think that they are, pretty much for the most part, they're all very circumstantial Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, look at the ones we have. Cubone, Golduck, I think, is Marowak. one. Marowak, yeah. And uh, Zoroark, which has which gives him the Russian ability, like mm-hmm. Keldeo. Oh, interesting. Um, nice. Yeah. And then the Golduck. Uh, I'll let you talk about the Golduck, Mr. Favorite Pokemon. <laughs> I Actually, you might need to pull up the Golduck break. I only know the regular Golduck uh, oh, okay. just because his attacks uh, kind of popped out at me with the discarding special energy. Uh, yeah. But I love Golduck, so I'm excited to see him. But Chris is right. Like None of these break cards are like like really overpowered Mm -hmm. yeah it's certainly not like uh mega evolved pokemon Mm -hmm. so which makes me spectate spec spectate makes me speculate that they're not going to count as an evolution i don't think they are that would take way too long to set up yeah on anything that had like uh for instance this uh golduck um if i can look at this here um oh well it's not here it was here, and now it's gone. <laughs> I have it. I'll oh, it. okay. Um, abilities called Hyper Trans. As often as you like during your turn before you attack, you can move a basic energy from one of your Pokemon to another one. Right. So kind of like um, a Fairy Aromatis. Transfer. Yeah, Aromatis yeah. Fairy Transfer, but only one energy once That's per true. turn. So it's like a free energy switch, but only once per turn. And, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know who's going to be setting up multiple Golduck Break Right. In it, to... He's in there to set up something. Yeah. And maybe we don't have that Pokemon he's meant to set up yet. Maybe that is, we don't know what it is. That is very true. If I had my choice of how Break would work, because mm-hmm. I think it mentions that in order to play him, you need its previous two right, right out. I think this was... I think this was in Yu-Gi-Oh! You would have a side deck of your break cards Mm. and this was kind of a thing of uh fusions in Yu-Gi-Oh so you would have the two pieces in your fusion card and you were able to play that out 
So if break is not in the deck, but it's a side deck and you can play your break cards once you have the two out there, that would be amazing. That's how I would choose to do it. I know Pokemon being Pokemon probably isn't going to be that way. Yeah. But I like that. It sounds like a mix of legend cards almost. Right, yeah. Yeah, Like where you had to get the pieces of legends and to piece them together. Mm -hmm. Um, Just from that set, the one the cards that we know of so mm-hmm. far. I'm really excited for Palkia EX. I don't know, people that are new listening, Pearl is my favorite game. It's my favorite gen. I love Palkia, so I'm very excited about the card. And it's really not that bad. You get to attach to water energy to a bench Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Does 40 damage. It's not that bad. Yeah, it's kind of like a uh, Emerald, s- or not Emerald Slash. Oh, yeah, Emerald Slash from Verizian EX. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like that, but with water energies Yeah. instead, which is kind of cool. And it just looks really cool. He looks, like, really fierce. He, she. Does Palkia have he, a gender? She, it. No, it does not. It's legendary. <laughs> they. Okay, Palkia EX. Let's go around. Chris, your pick from this set that you want. Ooh, okay. I think that my pick from this set is going to be the newly revealed supporter card. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. It's not necessarily a Pokemon. Sure. Um, there were, I think this was just yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Or, no, this morning, actually. Um, two well, this, f- this is a good transition, because that was the next thing, the full arts revealed. So. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Um, Go in. So two full art supporters were revealed today, and one of which was Giovanni, which is very cool. Oh, yeah. Because baby. we also had a supporter card revealed called Misty Spirit. And mm-hmm. I'm excited that all of these Gen 1, prominent Gen 1 characters are coming back, probably for the 20th anniversary of Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so Giovanni is pretty interesting, but that's not the one I'm most excited for. And there are certain mechanics in Giovanni, but I'll talk about them in a second. The one I'm really excited for is Bridget. Mm. So uh, the supporter, Bridget. And some of you may be listening saying, who the heck is Bridget? Like, is she a gym leader or something I missed out on? No. Bridget is the character that helps you in Pokemon Bank. Oh, really? Yes, Pokemon Bank. So when you transferred your Pokemon from um, black and white to X and Y and you had to use the Pokemon Bank, that character's name was Bridget. And what she does is she's a supporter, and both her and Giovanni, you can choose what you want their effect to be. So, uh, Bridget, you can either get one basic EX, which is meh, but um, for those of you that know me, you know I'm running a Raichu deck, which requires a lot of Pokemon on my bench. It allows me to get three basic Pokemon Mm -hmm. straight onto my bench from my deck. It's crazy. It's like Hoopa, but for basics. That's true. Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I can, yeah, I can, yeah, so think about this. I have a Sky Field. I play one Hoopa, get three EXs. And so that's four cards, and then I play Bridget and get three more basics, and that's seven already in one turn. That's crazy. That's amazing. So um, that's like what I'm it. really excited for. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, as a side note, Giovanni's is cool, because it works as you can either um, add 20 damage to your Pokemon's attack, like Muscle Band, uh, or you can draw until you have five cards in your hand. So whatever you happen to need at the time. I like that card. It's going to be cool. Yeah. Are you most cool. excited for Golduck, or...? Am I probably? Yeah. Um, I think the newest full art supporter. I think I'm most excited for um, Brock's infatuation, where you can uh, <laughs> use the effect of Pokemon Center Lady twice in a turn. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> that's that's a joke. Somebody make that card for me and <laughs> tweet it out. Brock's infatuation. Brock's infatuation. That's amazing. <laughs> That would be so cool. Yeah, Still, I would love that. The card I'm most excited for is Gary's Trump card. Oh, right, yeah, about, Gary's like, Trump in card. In general, right. <laughs> now, my, my real favorite card would be the Mega Houndoom. He's going to be yes. crazy. Mm-hmm. That's going to be really cool. And especially with the burning energy, so yeah. all the energy he's discarding, he can get back. That's going to uh, That's so crazy. Which is awesome. He's just going to be like an unstoppable machine. Yeah. Or am I talking about Zygarde? <gasps> <Da-na-na. laughs> Houndoom is 10% Psychard. Uh, no! <laughs> but green. <laughs> and sick looking. <laughs> 
So we'll be looking for more news about that whole set because it's pretty interesting, the mechanic with the break cards. So. I'm really excited for this set and not yeah. even for any of the break cards necessarily. I'm excited Marowak is getting some attention. I like Marowak. That's very true, yeah. But, um, but yeah, there's so many interesting supporters. They're just picking some like odd Pokemon, Yeah, I like guess. Golduck, Marowak, Zoroark. Like these Pokemon that haven't gotten any attention as EXs yeah. are now getting attention as... Um, Breaks, which yeah. is pretty cool. <laughs> I just forgot what I was going to say. Okay. <laughs> um, so something we haven't gotten to fill you guys in about, we hyped it up so much on the past episodes, mm-hmm. but Christopher and I went to the Pokemon World Championships in Boston. It was amazing. It was amazing. What was your favorite thing? Oh my gosh, I don't even know. I I think my favorite experience was being there for the award ceremony at the end. Hmm. Hmm. I think that, um, uh, you know, for those of you that have been following up on the league vlogs, you can look forward to this. Um, One of the coolest moments is when these people are walking out on stage being handed trophies, um, you know, shaking the creators of Pokemon's hands and being, um, you know, revered as literal Pokemon masters mm-hmm. um, is pretty amazing. And the, you know, you have the crowds cheering for them mm-hmm. and um, it's one of those things that unless you go to a big tournament, you're never going to see anything like it. Yeah. It's definitely, I mean, it's unreal. The energy when you're sitting in there, um, I'll just explain. So they had their, oh, wow. It was in a conference center in a hotel So you go into the hotel, you have to take the elevator up, and then it's on these two floors. And you would have no idea that it's happening unless you – because Chris and I walked right past it. Mm -hmm. You had to – it was like a little sign. And then when you go in there, it just, like, explodes. Pokemon explodes. Yeah, there's a shop. There's a ton of people just repping all their – like, everything they've ever owned with Pokemon – they're wearing, they're wearing it, it. <laughs> including us. Yeah. We saw <laughs> cosplayers. There was um, Mega Gallade and Gardevoirs there. Oh, nice. They looked really cool. good. Everybody was taking pictures with them and stuff. Lots of uh, Team Rocket, Team mm-hmm. Aqua, and Team Magma grunts yes. oh, cool. running yeah. around. I even saw um, a Cyrus from Team Galactic. Oh, nice. Which is one of the lesser known ones, which is pretty cool Yeah. to see. But the energy was crazy. When you go upstairs to the second floor, that's where they were having all the, <laughs> um, where they were showing all the battles on the big screens. There was three big screens. Mm-hmm. And as the day went on, people would just start, um, oh, what's that word? What is the word? I don't know. You know, like more people would come throughout the day. <laughs> just start accumulating. Compiling. Yeah. More people would show up as it got later and later into the day because nobody wants to get up early. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So by the on Sunday, Sunday is the day it ended, right? Sunday was the final. Yes. So, mm-hmm. so on Sunday, by the time it was the last battle for the VGC, there was a ton of people in there, mm-hmm. just a ton, and it was super loud, but it was really, really fun. Everybody was getting into it. And there were even moments where for the TCG – um, I'm not like as instinctual with TCG as you guys are. So something would happen in the match and everybody would freak out and I wouldn't know what was going on. <laughs> so like two seconds later, I would be like, oh, and then I would just miss it. I just missed <laughs> miss the moment. Yeah, because it takes me more time to think about that stuff than you guys. <laughs> but it was still really, really cool. That's I think awesome. my favorite moment was for the junior division for the VGC, um, this little Japanese girl won, and she was just like, when she won, she just looked up like it was no big deal. She was just smiling, <laughs> and it was so cute. I Aww. couldn't even handle it. And it she was, was wearing a little um, she Japanese was wearing flag. J- a Japanese flag as a cape. That's so awesome. Yeah. yeah, and she had her little, oh, she had a stuffed Pokemon. Do you remember what it was? No, I just remember the kid that was playing TCG that brought a huge primal grout on out yeah. on stage with him. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, she was adorable, and I uh, I was sitting next to her mom. Her mom was over by me, mm-hmm. and she ran up when she won and was taking pictures of the screen and taking pictures of her. Oh. It was just really cute. That's so I cool. I couldn't even handle it. That's awesome. <laughs> <sighs> and uh, we also got to meet Justin Flynn. Yeah. 
yeah. Just going to throw that out there. I, uh, yeah, I think I peed a little. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool. Um, him and his girlfriend, Sarah, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. We, um, after we met them, we just chatted with them for like 15 minutes or so. And he was super chill. Yeah. It was awesome. So don't be afraid if you see people that you know and have wanted to meet. Don't be afraid to walk up and just go meet them. They may end up being awesome. Yeah, you can see it on the vlogs, but I'm, I, like, made it my mission <laughs> to meet this guy. And so Chris was over, I think, walking the baby around. Mm-hmm. And I looked to my left, and I was like, hey, that guy looks so much like Jay Flynn. And then I was like, hold on a second. <laughs> I think that is him. So when Chris got back, I was just freaking out, and he had to, like, drag me over there. <laughs> yeah. That's so, awesome. It was awesome. It was amazing though. He was so nice and he but he was so tired. That's the, poor guy. Yeah, that's one of the things that would be really rough. Um, just doing that job and competing too. Just so tired. Yeah. So we'll have to remember that um when all of us get our letters and calls to go um <laughs> to compete. Uh, no, not to compete, but to do the uh commentary oh, on the yes. matches we'll just yeah. have to remember we're going to be a little tired but mm. you know yeah shout out to them because they were really good sports <laughs> with how exhausted they were yeah guys tweet out to pokemon hey go check out pokemon <laughs> trainer tv yeah yeah so Get these them guys on the live need stream. To, <laughs> yeah these guys need to commentate <laughs> in the next worlds <laughs> there's so much to talk about though we can't really cover it all so if you guys have questions We'll um, let you know our contact stuff at the end, but definitely shoot us your questions if yeah. there's something specific you want to know about. And be sure to catch the vlogs on Trainer TV on YouTube as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, the real news that I think people want to hear about more than our lovely trip is Pokemon Go. Dun, 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 dun. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Pokemon Go, the rise of the Pokemon Master. <laughs> Dude, the real these life two, Pokemon you Master. You should have heard these two all day. I don't even know. For those of you that follow me on Twitter, you saw my like vomit of tweets <laughs> come yeah. out that morning. <laughs> it was great because I got up at 4.30 in the morning for work. I walked over to the computer after getting my cup of coffee, sat down, get, went to the internet. Lo and behold, it was just my dreams were staring me in the face. <laughs> Slapping you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the trailer, and I don't know if it's just because I was delusional from, like, getting no sleep, or if it was because I really wanted this my whole life, but I might have started Probably crying. <laughs> okay, I didn't start crying. But... I did. <laughs> did you really? I will honestly say I cried you when did? I watched that. <laughs> what? Because, okay, you have to understand, like, that's all you dream of. I was the same, like, age of as ash when it first came out right and you all you dream of your whole life is becoming a pokemon master now it's slowly becoming more and more reality if you have the viewers behind you of course um you know and are making episodes but that's all you ever want is to travel the world like your real world meet pe- people meet friends and catch pokemon yeah yeah i will say that i got goosebumps well we should talk about what this is first yeah um so pokemon go is more or less it's they're describing it as an augmented reality game for smartphones either android or iphone um sorry windows phone users ripping pieces Um, i had one though i feel you i had one too i feel you but i am so happy that anyway that's not important um but anyways so what it's going to do is the way that this is shown is your phone will tell you um, when a Pokemon is nearby. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know if they're going it's to like have a you... like radar. Yeah. Like, I don't know if they're going to have you look through the screen and show it or if it's going to show it a different way. Um, but essentially, so you'll be, like, walking around and it will say, like, you know, Pikachu... 10 meters to your left or whatever Mm -hmm. and you can run over there encounter the pikachu and battle and catch it and um you know along with that you also have you can trade with people you can battle with people um it's it's the real life pokemon journey Mm -hmm. yeah it's i don't even like who knew we were gonna see something like this actually happen in our lives yeah Mm -hmm. in real life (laughs) and um irl (laughs) and you know something um 
you know, we'll get into a trailer analysis in a little bit. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll, we'll go through the trailer yeah. systematically. <sighs> it's just crazy. To, and I feel, like, so jealous of, like, the little kids that come to League. Yes. This is happening for them when they're, like, right when they have gotten into Pokemon. Yeah. They didn't even have to wait. No. It's just like, oh, you want Pokemon in real life? Boom. Here, here it you is. Go. Um, who was it? I think it was... Um, it might have been Masuda or one of the other head honchos at Pokemon Nintendo, <laughs> but they said that because of all this stuff, they wish they had been born into this generation uh, to enjoy it as a kid Yeah. again. And, um, you know, in, you guys have heard me talk about this, and uh, I know you two here have heard me talk about this. My ultimate dream, what I want to see realized, if anything else in the Pokemon world, I want to see... A dedicated space, a dedicated coliseum for Pokemon battles where I walk into one side into a big field and my opponent walks in on the other and people can either buy tickets or they can freely come and watch and fill the stands and cheer and you have hologram Pokemon battles. Yep. And I don't care if I'm punching in the commands on my DS or if I get to yell them at my Pokemon and tell them what to do, like anime style. But that is the ultimate dream, and we are a huge leap closer because of Pokemon Go. Yep. I'll tell you what I'll do if that happens. Just dodge it! Dodge it! <laughs> dodge, dodge it! <laughs> Truly in anime style. <laughs> I'm always like, when I watch the anime, I'm like, that is not even fair! I don't have a dodge it option on my 3DS, okay? You do. It's called the Protect TM. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> No, I think I think that's the goal, you know, mm-hmm. for yeah. Trainer TV. So you guys listening, every uh, video you watch, every podcast you listen to, every mm-hmm. live stream of Chris as you watch, we will someday build a Coliseum. <laughs> We're going to do You guys it. are helping us do that. <laughs> you heard it here first, you guys. Yeah. Every time. So share this with everyone you know. Making us one step closer. If necessary, <laughs> we will build the Coliseum ourselves. Every time you watch or listen, a Pidgeot get its, gets its wings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And oh, you will be able I to catch them on Pokemon Pidgeot. Go. <laughs> oh. Just a nugget. <laughs> a nugget? <laughs> Just a little nugget. <laughs> Sorry, this is getting depressing. So back to Pokemon Go. Yeah, back to the excitement. <laughs> so let's um, let's talk about the trailer. Mm-hmm. So, Courtney, you had said that yes, it so was making you emotional. Before all this, I was going to say, when I was watching the trailer, I'm like, yeah. okay, that's pretty cool. I, you know, it, I mean, it is. It's really cool. Mm-hmm. But I was waiting for that, like, hook to really be like, this is going to be amazing. At the end... When it shows everybody in New York getting together to battle Mewtwo, I just lost it. It's so cool. I mean, for me, that's the dream. Yeah. The dream for me is getting to collaborate with other people. Like Aaron said, meeting other people that you never would have known liked Pokemon. Mm-hmm. And you just run into them like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm trying to battle Mewtwo. And you're like, so am I. We can do this. Right. It's just really cool. It, it creates... In an age where apps are single person focused, you know, like Doodle Jump, one player, Angry Birds, one player, um, I just think it's so cool where you can get together. It's just kind of cultivating teamwork. Well, what's nice about Pokemon Go as well is the video games, because, you know, the reason that they made the two versions and the exclusive Pokemon, aside from selling more copies, of course. <laughs> um, was to get people to interact with each other Mm. in real life. And unfortunately, with the way that video games have evolved and with the, in the way that the internet has taken over, um, Pokemon video games have been forced to adapt or die. You know, if they did not offer online trading and online battling, it would die. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. However, with Pokemon Go, It allows them to get back to essentially, like, you have to have that link cable. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to walk up to a person and say, hey, will you trade me a Vulpix 
for mm-hmm. my bell sprout. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. um, it's that kind of thing where it has to be brought back to person to person interaction, mm. yeah. which is very, very cool. I think that'll also help a lot with um, parents with their kids wanting to do this because, you know, a big thing with parents is, well, I don't want them staring at a screen all day, you know, with the video game. Right. And given it's still a screen on your phone, but now they can, they'll have to go out you know, in public. You have to go outside. Oh, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And something as well is, thanks to the accessory they're releasing along with it, the kids don't even have to stare at a screen. Mm-hmm. The, um, the trailer also showed a uh, an accessory to go with it. You know, you can make it a bracelet, a necklace, a brooch. Think of it like a mega keystone, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> you know, yeah. pick a place on your body to put it and... Um, you know, what it does is essentially it will buzz or light up to alert you of a Pokemon nearby. Mm-hmm. And, you know, based on what you hit, you can do different options with it. Mm-hmm. Um, which is cool because that's also going to be a mark of fellow trainers. That's true. That's definitely true, yeah. You mm-hmm. can pick them out of the crowd. Well, and think of it like this. So in the Pokemon video games, when a trainer's eyes meet, they have to battle, right? right? Now imagine walking through a mall or like a you know, strip mall or something like that, populated area, and you see someone's Pokemon Go Plus on their wrist, and they see yours hanging on your necklace, Mm -hmm. and you're like, so you're a trainer? Like, No, you're like, I like shorts, they're comfy and easy to wear. (laughs) And then just start battling, (laughs) right? (laughs) People uh, online are really going to town with this. Like, some people are saying, I can't wait to be the guy that stands on the side of the road and tells them how good the food I ate was, and then battle them. (laughs) (laughs) Or, you know, people are talking about, hey, let's organize a real-life Team Rocket. (laughs) No, (laughs) exactly. (laughs) That kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I think that as far as the trailer itself goes. So the beginning was really cool, and I really liked how it showed, um, like, the father and his son going Mm -hmm. out and hunting for that Charizard, Mm -hmm. which was really cool because a big part of this trailer was they showed Mm 20-somethings. Exactly. They showed adults Mm -hmm. playing Pokemon. Well, that's their, I would think that's their market. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and this is something as well, is that, you know, Pokemon has unfortunately gotten a bad rap because people um, outside of the community mm-hmm. are saying, oh, it's a kid's game, you know, it's a kid's game, it's only aimed at 90s, you know, 10-year-olds, whatever. Right. Pokemon Go is, I would say, nigh exclusively aimed at adults. Mm. Because, well, yes, kids are getting cell phones younger and younger and younger. Look at the trailer, though. Like, there's, like, one kid in that whole trailer. Right. The rest are yeah. either high school age or above. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, Pokemon has stepped up and realized that all of their events, like, um, Worlds, for instance, you have double or triple the people in the Masters division, which is over 18, than mm-hmm. you do juniors and seniors combined. Right. Oh, yeah. And it's, like, Pokemon has sat down and understood adults are our market now. Yeah. And yeah. Pokemon Go is the first foray into that. And that's why they showed, you know, all the Gen 1s. Right. Because, like, um, you know, we're at the age now where some of us, not all of us, <laughs> no, have, have children, have families. Right. We grew up with this. We're going to recognize the Gen 1 Pokemon, uh, even if we're not currently playing it. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to bring our families into that. Another thing is um, a lot of college age um People use the ROMs or whatever online emulators. Emulators, mm-hmm. thank you, of Pokemon. So they're not, you know, purchasing it. They they, they just want it like mobile or whatever to right. play on their phone. They just did that for you, Pokemon <laughs> Go. Um, and I think this plays into what we were talking about earlier. Oh, like we're gonna bring this audience or this old audience in a little bit to this this these Gen Oneers. Mm-hmm. Oh. Here's our TCG, and there are full art <laughs> supporters <laughs> that you're going to recognize. Yeah. So they're like, they're going to check that out as well. Yeah. That's really cool to think of because it's almost like they're starting the journey again. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, let's go back to Kanto. You know, like, 
you guys grew up with this and a lot of you dropped off after gold and silver it's like look we're ready to go along right here with you like we're ready to you know i don't know i don't know how to explain it i was gonna say i think x and y kind of reflected that we it touched did. on this a little bit in mm. one of our last podcasts but lysander was just really a turn for the antagonist in the game he was definitely mm-hmm. They just blurred the line a little more between good and evil, I guess you would say. Yeah. It's not like, oh, they're chopping off slowpoke tails and eating them. That's definitely bad. <laughs> right. Like, no, 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 bad team rocket. Stealing's <laughs> bad. Cutting yeah. off tails is bad. <laughs> yeah. They just really elevated the level of, I don't know. It, it, they made for a much more mature story. Yeah. And it's something that, it wasn't like a quick snippet as far as the X and Y games went. Like, um, you know, there's still a hole in that town where Lysander brought up his giant cannon to pretty much Mm -hmm. blow up anyone that was deemed undesirable. In -hmm. all reality, you know, those that weren't in Team Flare. That weren't fabulous. Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And he was like, I'm doing this for the good of mankind. Like, if we're ever going to, you know, continue to progress as a species, only the best of us can be here, and yada yada. Mm -hmm. And, um... You know, and I suppose if you want to play the devil's advocate, you know, you can you can say, well, I understand he's doing this for the good of humanity. <laughs> but then when you look at it through common sense lens, you're like, oh, wait, but he's killing millions of people. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's just um, I really think that Pokemon is starting to go the way of adults and yeah. not in the sense of things are inappropriate, but in the sense of it's just becoming a more grown up game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so this is really going to just push that further. I think everybody is, I, obviously on Twitter, even on Facebook, when I got on, everybody's just freaking out. And that says something, too. Mm-hmm. Because even when, like, uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire were announced, and, of course, within the community, everyone wanted Hoenn remakes, you know? Um Okay, not everyone, but a ton of people wanted Hoenn remakes. And you still didn't see that on the front page of Twitter trending. True. You know, yeah. Pokemon Go, instantly, front page of Twitter, it's on news, online. You know, it may not have hit the mainstream news, um, you know, but we hit, like, all the major news outlets on the internet mm. as well. And, yeah. you know, a big testimony to how appealing Pokemon Go is is that, um, you know, at my place of work, I work at a vet's office. So, you know, there aren't any geeks to be found at a vet's office but me, (laughs) you know. (laughs) And even people at my work are talking about this. These are people that don't even own a a game console. They haven't owned one since the Game Boy Color, you know, and they're telling me that they're going to get Pokemon Go. That's Mm -hmm. that's insane. Yeah. That's amazing. And um, that's the kind of mass appeal that this is going to have. I think it's just been a surprise for people who have, like, my parents, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, well, you know, my dad, he's always giving us crap about, you know, Pokemon, how we still play it. Right, poking fun at us. That's, like Aaron was saying, that's from the 90s, why are you still (laughs) playing it? And this has kind of just been, I think, opened their eyes a little bit to, wow, this is a reality, this could be a reality. Right, and um, I think that's something that people don't realize. People think that Pokemon is still like a uh, a niche thing, mm-hmm. when in reality, um, one of one of my friends is a is a judge, and he got invited to Judge Worlds, and they prepared seventeen hundred um, participant bags for the world championships. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, this is not a niche thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is widespread, and now people are beginning to recognize that. Right. Yeah, it's just, it's such a huge deal for so many different reasons. So I can't wait to see what news we get in the future. Yeah. When is it coming to us again? So it it is coming 2016. Um, it has been rumored that it's going to be early 2016. Mm-hmm. We know that there's going to be a closed beta coming to us in December, but we don't know what group is going to have access to that closed beta as of right now. Right. Um, 
my personal assumption is it's it is going to be for those that were existing Ingress players, um, which is Ingress is a, another mobile game kind of location based style um, that's helping develop this game, uh, having the most experience with location based mobile platforming. Mm, yeah, definitely. Um, and so I don't know if it's going to be just for loyal players of theirs or those that joined before the announcement or at the announcement or if they're just going to let all players who have played ingress in on the beta right yeah. one of the two so um man 2016 is too far away it would make sense if they did it early 2016 because kids have their well most people probably have some christmas money left mm. burning holes in their pockets so yeah <laughs> Yeah, that is something as well. We don't know how the payment is going to work. Or how much it's going to be, or how much well, the bracelets are going to right. be. Right. The game itself is going to be free, but it will have paid add-ons. Yeah. Mm. Now people look at that and they say, oh my gosh, it's Candy Crush. You know, like... You want a great ball? Pay 25 cents. <laughs> exactly. Which... And I, I feel like some people, like Pokemon Shuffle, left a bad taste in their mouth in that sense, where it's like, you know, hey, you got you can have a better can chance at catching this Pokemon if you use a great ball. Mm -hmm. Do you want to buy 4,000 coins now <laughs> to, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. Um, but I think with something as widespread as Pokemon go, they're not going to do that because Pokemon shuffle was their test experiment. It was to see how people would react to seeing Pokemon on cell phones mm. and they have their feedback that people don't like that aspect and I have faith in the Pokemon company to say they're not going to push it in your face like that. I disagree. Really? Yeah, I think uh, free apps within in-game purchases is the future, and if you don't like it, you're not going to be playing games. <laughs> like, I think that's the way it's going to be. I think it's not unreasonable, especially if they, like, market it towards families or, you know, somebody. They can't charge, you know, a lot for right. it, but I can see maybe pokeballs being free or like a starting package along with with your bracelet with potions or i don't know however it works mm -hmm. um i think there could be in-game coins as you know as there is right. when you beat a trainer when you you know when you get awards you won't need as m much of the purchasing but i do think like great balls ultra balls master balls stuff like that will have a cost to mm -hmm. them i agree with you I think that they're going to allow you alternative ways to get them. And so it's going to be, would you rather spend time or money to get this? As most of those games, as most I guess, of those games are, yeah. which um, like Shuffle is. Now, I wouldn't have as much of an issue with Shuffle if every time I failed to catch a Pokemon, it reminded me, if I pay money, I have a better chance of it. Okay. I wouldn't mind as much at that point. And I think that's been the only complaint. Like, if they just left the Great Balls in the store and didn't tell me about them except maybe once or twice i'd be fine mm -hmm. you know um and i'm still not gonna spend any money on it and i've had a good experience with the game but i'm gonna <laughs> drop a lot of money on it <laughs> i know i did say on twitter and if pokemon go turns out to be anything how we're anticipating it is the very first app i will allow myself to spend money on nice that's something i wanted to bring up some people are saying that maybe the trailer overhyped the game because it was so good and so mind blowing. A lot of people are saying that the expectat they made the expectations too high and mm -hmm. that it's not going to meet our standards now after seeing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say keep your expectations not low because it'll still be pretty cool, maybe. but like at <laughs> at a decent level. Um, Chris downloaded ingress and showed it mm -hmm. to me um like you mentioned earlier the people that are helping with the app if you haven't you know played ingress go check it out now because yeah, like it try. it's free at, at least expect that right and that ingress pokemon themed would be more than enough for me to play yeah mm -hmm. absolutely um you know ingress um for those of you that haven't played it the most basic rundown is you walk around it's like a game of capture the flag there are portals for your team and the other team and um you know when you walk by one you can weaken theirs until you can steal it essentially and it's something that happens like little by little day by day and so if it's like that but you're walking around and there are 
Pokemon in different areas. Right. I'm okay with that. Yeah. That would be awesome. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, Ingress is free, so check it out and use that as a baseline for your expectations, like Aaron mm-hmm. said. Yeah. And, like, with what Courtney mentioned with anticipation and what we were talking about, keep in mind this is the beginning. Yes. Like, yeah. let's help it out. Let's, you know, help it grow. Time. Let's support it. Yeah, let's support it. Let's support it. <laughs> our names being the supporters is why i did that little thing uh no and then someday we'll all have google glass or whatever other technologies yeah. out there and we'll be able to see the pokemon in real life yeah you're gonna have to be a little forgiving at the start you mm-hmm. know like mm-hmm. i was saying with the tcg there's gonna be holes that you're gonna have to fix later so mm-hmm. we can deal with that as it comes right. i think we just need to be grateful right now that this is even happening Exactly. Definitely. So, <laughs> um, I think we can just do our game really quick. It's a fun way to game end time. The cast. I see this game, little game title. Game time. Ooh, <laughs> game time. <laughs> what awesome. game are we doing, Professor Chris? We are going to be doing uh, an old favorite. Oh. What? <laughs> I said oh. I thought you said no. Oh no, I wouldn't like, say no. I'd How say, old oh. can it be? This is episode eight. <laughs> so now we have done long time ago <laughs> in a galaxy. Far- no, anyways, wrong fandom. Um, so we are going to be doing our trainer battles. So each of us has faced off against the other one thus far. So this game is we each get assigned a Pokemon trainer, and we each have one minute to argue our points as to why they would win in a Pokemon battle. And then it's up to you guys to vote to determine who wins. Now, since we have all faced each other, we are, this time, all three going to get a randomized trainer. And then we will each have one minute to argue our points against the other ones. Let's do it. You heard it here. Excellent. (laughs) So, let me get my... Did you uh, do the Tri-Trainer Tournament? <laughs> this is on the honor system, Christopher. What's that? This is on the honor system, so you better be doing it randomly. I am. I am. As random as I can He's do He's got to be like, Courtney, you get Bug Catcher. <laughs> Aaron, you have Lass. Cynthia. Yes. Bug Catcher, stupid face. When did last go out? The name, the trainer name. Oh. When did it go out? What mm-hmm. do you mean? Because I don't think it's around anymore. Yeah, they do. They still have last. Is it still yeah, last? Yeah, and last. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I thought there's like lady and stuff now. There's like fancy ladies at that mansion in. Um, oh yeah, well X there's and beauty y. and there's. Oh, beauty's what I was thinking. Yeah. Of. All right, so. Uh oh. Who is going to be assigned the first trainer? It's picked, but now we need to pick who gets it. Doesn't matter. Who gets it? Who gets it? Who gets it? Who Courtney. Gets it? <laughs> Courtney. Courtney, you have the fiery gym leader of Lava Ridge, Flannery. Oh. Dang it. I was hoping okay. it'd be Blaine, and then I could, like, make fun of him being an old man. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's an old man, so. I don't know Flannery. I don't, don't really know a lot about him either. No, but it's fire, so I can argue Did it. Did you say him? What? It's a girl. Flannery is a girl. Oh, yeah. See, I need to Google this. <laughs> okay, I'll take Flannery. <laughs> um, let's see here. And my rando bot. It's going to be a water and it's going to be me. Let's see. Flannery is a dude's name. <laughs> it's no, a lady's it's, name. How would you give it to a lady? That's a lady's name. It's not a lady's name. All right. Are we ready? Who <laughs> wants the next one? He's just looking through. I don't think he's being random. <laughs> no, I, I'm just going like this until we have I want one. the next one. Okay. Yours is going to be the trainer N. Oh. Are you freaking... Why couldn't I have gotten N? Okay, so I have Flannery. Aaron, you have N. And Courtney, you have Watson. Okay. The Marvel City gym leader. All right. Electric type. Yep. Fat, looks like a chipmunk. All right. You know who he is? Yeah. I think we've already defeated him by that description. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for making him sound real good. <laughs> no, I was just helping, because that was another Hoenn gym leader. Happened to be. So, are we ready? I am. 
Okay. <laughs> no. Who's going first? Aaron, start. I wait. No. Three. Me. Two. One. <laughs> okay. Well, who is your trainer? Flannery. Flannery. Oh gosh. And yours is <laughs> some some fat electric man. Who's a chipmunk? Apparently. He's okay. A gym leader. Well, first of all, I will just attack Courtney as first <laughs> of being like. <laughs> You've burned up 20 seconds. <laughs> of being the Lieutenant Surge wannabe and not being fit and awesome. I'm a sellout. And basically. I will defeat yours by saying that N is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and he has amazing green hair that would not be burned up by fire. Is that it? How much did, more? 20 seconds. 20 seconds. <sighs> he has amazing card. And nobody knows that your trainer is a girl. So he's probably a man. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my and, gosh. yeah. Come on, it's N. What are you going to do? I don't, I can't. N argue. time is up. I don't have to argue for N. <laughs> oh, sure. N is N is N. I shouldn't have to argue for mine. Oh, my gosh. All right, you or me? Doesn't matter. Okay, um, I'll go. All right. And three, two, one. First of all, I've decided Aaron doesn't even know who N really is. Um, <laughs> I just don't have to argue for him. <laughs> um, okay, so Flannery would win in a battle between these two trainers because um, she succeeded the gym um, from someone else. So she is a new gym leader, which means doesn't mean she's weak. It means that instead she brings fresh new ideas to these people that have been training for a long time. Now, N wants to um, set all Pokemon free and as a result isn't wholly focused on battling and being as good as he can in a battle. However, Flannery is and she is one of the most determined gym leaders to win. Um, and that is very obvious by her... Um, dialogue before the match and she would beat watson because her gym comes after watson which means she has been placed in a higher rank of authority thus meaning she is more powerful and her pokemon are higher leveled than watson's and end argument and i think all listeners just witnessed that in a game of life you would lose what? <laughs> <laughs> you know nobody's allowed to be that nerdy <laughs> I feel like I'm the only one that pays attention to the characters. That are Paying attention is different from what you just did. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole different level. Yeah, yeah. This isn't even freaking fair. We'll okay. let the listeners decide who okay. wins this. Okay. Uh, you guys know who N is. I know who he is. We don't have to talk about him. <laughs> <laughs> He's he has over. green hair. Yeah. All right, Courtney, are you ready? Yeah. In three, two, one. Okay, to your point, Christopher, higher level Pokemon don't always mean better or more powerful Pokemon. So I don't think that's a very valid point. Secondly, Watson may not be ranked above Flannery, but once again, that does not mean that he's worse. Maybe he has more experience than her. Just because you're higher ranked doesn't mean that you have more skill. Have you seen Attack on Titan? It's very clear <laughs> in that show, okay? I had to put it in somewhere. <laughs> also, N, I just, he's great. I don't have anything bad to say about N. I'm sorry. Are you freaking kidding me? N is N is, if he's N. I mean, <laughs> I could piggyback off of your point, though. I mean, it'd be hard if you're not focused on battling to win a battle. Mm. Watson is also much older than N, so he probably has a lot more experience. Um, and probably goes off of it, his instincts more. That would help him to win battles with and heart. End. Nice. That's a good end. Nice. Heart. That was good <laughs> ending. Very good. Imagery. Heart. <laughs> well, and now it is up to you guys to decide. In a battle locked between this In triangle. a battle of awesomeness. In, in a Pokemon <laughs> battle. <laughs> There's no charge for us. This is not like last <laughs> time where it turned into who's more fabulous, Gary Ogre or Lysander. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, who would win? We need your answers. Would it be Watson? Would it be Flannery? Or would it be Duh? Just write his name <laughs> in the comment section. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Can you picture that in TCG? Oh, I'm just going to play Duh. Duh. I'll what? versus here for a Duh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <For a> duh. <laughs> I'm 
course I'm playing it. <laughs> Everyone plays this card. <laughs> so in order to do that, you guys are going to need our contact info. At the supporters, you can email us. It's at the supporters podcast at AOL.com. Is that correct? Um, well, or is it just cast? I can never remember. It It's um, the supporters podcast yes. at AOL.com. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And you can follow us on Twitter at supporterscast. That's our Twitter handle. Separately, I'm Courtney. You can follow me on Twitter. It's at Kitchy Courtney, and I'm on Instagram as well, but that's mostly baby pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just throw that out there now so you know what you're getting into. And uh, I am Professor Chris. You can find me on Twitter at Rothian, that's R-A-U-T-H-I-A-N, um, or on the comment section of Trainer TV videos. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm Aaron. Uh, you could find me at pkmn trainer tv on twitter if you're watching this on youtube all of our links are in the description yes so go check that out if you're not on youtube go immediately to trainer tv you can just search it it'll pop up um and come check us out and it's not the one that has some workout videos of a guy jogging because i accidentally clicked that one (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so if you see that you've gone to the wrong channel you've gone too far in the internet <laughs> we don't care about jogging no. <laughs> until you pokemon know. go until comes yes, out and then yeah we really be crazy <laughs> that's their real jogging goal enthusiasts. they teamed up yes. with michelle obama to make us all less fat <laughs> <laughs> what well I, I just got too political <laughs> that's awesome i'm not playing this game <laughs> i'm not playing this game anymore <laughs> all right Uh, Well, you guys, thank you so much again for tuning in to another episode of The Supporters. Thank you so much for joining us. But unfortunately, as you all know, you can only play one supporter per turn. So until next turn, we're The Supporters.